Welcome to the 51st chapter of the book of Isaiah. I'm picking up after a hiatus of a couple of weeks at the end of December of 2017. I had a, caught a cold and I uh, couldn't hardly talk. I was hoarse. And so anyway, uh, I took a couple of weeks off from doing the seminars. I couldn't have done them. And then um, now I'm starting this one up. Hopefully I can get through it. And there is... Uh, being uh, done on New Year's Eve. Uh, it's uh, 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time, December the 31st. And it begins, Akusate uh, mu, hear me, hearken to me. And you see the exclamation point. So this is, do it, hearken to me, O ones pursuing the just thing and seeking the Lord. When I hope that would be all of us that are pursuing what is just in seeking the Lord. So he's saying, pay attention. Look into the solid rock which you quarried and into the pit of the well which you dug. And to the Jews, I believe he's talking about um, the things uh, earlier with Abraham because he mentions Abraham here. Uh, the solid rock, it's, I found this in Deuteronomy 32, 13. And he led uh, them produce of fields. They nursed honey from out of the rock and uh, live oil from out of the solid rock, Deuteronomy 32, 13. That's in the Ode of Moses. Uh, so uh, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, the one travailing with you. Now, uh, the Jews could look at this one man who was basically the beginning of uh, the, the Jewish experience uh, in his uh, sons, grandchildren, the, uh, the seed of Abraham and the Jews becoming a nation and coming out of Egypt with Moses. And he was one person. I called him and blessed him and loved him and multiplied him. And I believe uh, he can do that with all of us, every one of us. Basically, we there is the Jewish nation and then there are the Christians, which are in nations throughout the world. But it basically boils down to one thing, I believe, and that's me. Uh, the, uh, what God has done for me, and that um, he blessed Abraham, he has blessed me. Hopefully, he has blessed you. And he loved Abraham, and God loves me, and hopefully he loves you. And multiplied him, and Abraham had a, a many sons and grandchildren and so forth, and I have not, but I look at the people that are reading the Apostolic Bible, listening to the seminars, as sort of like a seed. And I hope that you have uh, many uh, children yourself and are blessings by God. And he says then, uh, and I will, now I will comfort you, O Zion. So he's uh, talking to a Zion. And Zion uh, but generally is the area, a uh, small area that was in Jerusalem, but it became um, pretty much uh, taken as the Jewish experience in Israel, in the country of Israel. I don't believe they would call Zion anything outside of Israel, Zion, uh, but I'm not sure. And I comforted all uh, her desolate places, and I will make, and this should be ta instead of to. To is singular, and ta is plural. It goes along the same as here. And I will make her desolate places as a parad paradison. And we have uh, paradise. This word comes from it. Erima, uh, er 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 is a uh, hermit. comes from that word there in English. Derivatives. And her western places... Uh, as a paradise of the Lord. So he is going to bless Zion. It doesn't say when, but he will. Now, it's interesting that Isaiah would bring that out because you would think that they would have been blessed at that time. But he is apparently looking at something that um, a desolation is going to take place, which we are talked about, which we are told about in the book of uh, Daniel, the desolation, and then uh, in the book in the book of Revelation. Uh, they shall find uh, gladness 
and a leap for joy in her acknowledgement and a voice of praise. And the places of Israel today, from what I've seen, pictures it is like a paradise, are beautiful. Uh, the um, uh, fruits and uh, vegetables that they are growing are becoming uh, famous worldwide in, in their exporting. Things are happening in Israel uh, that um, are interesting going into the tw- 2018. Uh, there's a small revolution beginning right now, as I'm speaking, in Iran, who has been a nemesis towards Israel. And so now whether anything turns out of that, uh, I don't know. But the United States with a new president has pretty much shaken hands with Israel uh, against the enemies of Israel. So a lot of things have changed. Uh, Akusate mu, akusate mu, twice, hear me, hear me, oh my people, and my people can be who? Well, that doesn't say, uh, could be more than the Jews, I believe, could be us who are his people. He doesn't say the Jews or Israel, and oh kings, uh, give ear to me. So here he's talking to kings, not a king of Israel, but uh, and a, a king. So to me, it's a worldwide dissemination of the, of the things of God. A give ear to me, for a law shall go forth uh, from me and my judgment for a light of nations. Now, I don't see any type of law or a judgment for a light of nations coming out of Israel today. I believe he's talking about Jesus Christ here, uh, who is uh, of Zion and the law and judgment and the light of the nations. Jesus is definitely a light unto the nations. It's the things that he has are so wonderful and beautiful. Uh, There's no other religion, not that he is a religion, but there is no religion that has anything compared to what the person of Jesus Christ is. Um, Buddha, I I don't know a whole lot about him. I haven't read a lot about him personally, but... um, Outside of Buddha, we have the Hindus, and they're more of a, they more or less have a lot of animal gods from what I can see, and more of a man's actions uh, will lead to where he goes eventually after he passes from this uh, life to the next. And the Muslims have a a god that's way up. Uh, It doesn't, it pretty much doesn't interfere with personal matters of human beings, and Um, They don't believe that God had a son and so forth. So Jesus uh, and Muhammad was a um, a military man. I don't know a whole lot about Muhammad, probably not any much more than I do about Buddha, but I know that he was a military man. And uh, the Muslim religion today is a, um, gives birth to a lot of violence throughout the world, not the individual Muslims are violent, but you, know, you can look at a Muslim and say, well, I know a lot of Muslims are not violent. But when you look on the whole and the whole world and you find out where there are battles and fights and um, wars, it generally has to do with um, the Muslims, with whoever they are next to. Now, doesn't mean that there hasn't been wars uh, because of uh, other uh, religions also, uh, Shinto with the Japanese. I'm sure the Christians have had their re- wars in Europe and so forth. So, uh, But the person of Jesus is uh, the light of the nations. And it continues in 5, My righteousness approaches quickly, and Jesus is righteous. This is what he's all about, righteousness. And my deliverance shall go forth as fos, as light. And Jesus, again, um, is the um, the light, and I just don't see that coming from Israel today. And on my arm they shall hope. Uh, uh, Ions shall wait for me, and as we mentioned before, Ions generally is a figure for the nations of the world, and on my arm they shall hope. So it's uh, the hope of the world is not on Israel. It's probably the opposite. A lot of countries want to get rid of Israel and the Jews and 
so forth, but God has his purpose and use for them. But yet, uh, with Jesus, who is um, now for 2,000 years the person that people see in so many places of the world uh, that they have hope. Uh, Whenever they see Christians, they know the Christians generally are not going to want to harm them, want to help. They will want to help them. And so uh, if you're going to hope on somebody, you're certainly not going to hope on somebody that wants to do you harm. You're going to hope on somebody that wants to help you. And this is what Jesus does. And this continues, lift up uh, your eyes unto the heaven, who are unknown, and ophthalmous derivatives, and look unto the gain kato below. Uh, For the heaven is as smoke, having been solidified, and the earth as a cloak shall be old. So something is going to happen, he's saying. Uh, Heaven is that smoke having been solidified. Now, I don't exactly know what that means. I mean, a smoke and being solidified would be a solid almost, something that you wouldn't be able to breathe, and the earth as a cloak shall be old. So he's going into the future again here as uh, I see it. And the ones inhabiting uh, shall die as these. It's not a good sign here. He's given to the future. But the deliverance of mine shall be into the eon, and the righteousness of mine in no way shall fail. Now, uh, the eon is not, some people would make this, they don't like the word eternal, and I changed it to eon uh, from uh, into the eon. Uh, in, uh, age, I think, is what the King James calls it, a, a world and uh, worlds without end, but it's an eon. But there's eons of the eons, and God does not end because of um, the not liking the word eon. And the righteousness of mine in no way shall fail. Now, I was reading about a major um, denomination, uh, Christian denomination in the United States yesterday. They basically uh, don't think that there is going to be a... Hades, where it'll burn forever, as Jesus says, but that the people that die will be destroyed. But the Bible, of course, doesn't say that. And again, uh, you have to really, uh, to me, reading the Greek Bible, the Apostolic Bible, is the best, not my translation. But of course, if you don't know the Greek, then you're depending on it. But I believe it's a very accurate, literal translation. I looked up every word in the dictionary. I didn't add or change a word uh, to make it something else. If it says a uh, epos, uh, which is horse, uh, and I didn't change it to an animal, which I could have said the animal went to the river to drink water. But if it was epos, the literal thing would be the horse went to the river to drink water. And this is the apostolic Bible, and you can see it literal words, and you can study these words. And eon would be uh, one of these words. It continues, Akusate mu, again, hear me. And there's the exclamation in the imperative, O ones, knowing equity. A people of whom my law is in their heart. Well, now he's changing from, it's not a, it's not a people that are hereditary. The Jews were a hereditary people. If you had Jewish blood in you, then you were a Jew. And, but that did not mean that you had the law in their heart. Uh, they had the law of Moses, uh, but was it in their heart? Well, now here would be a good place, whoops, hit the not mic here, a good place for the people that would argue, the Jews that would argue over the oral law, they could bring this up and say, well, my law is in their heart, so therefore an oral law uh, was uh, given, but I don't believe that's what it's talking about here. I believe the law is a written law, but yet when Christ came, the law of Christ was basically loving your neighbor as yourself, loving God. And it's in our heart. It's not something that we have to follow this, um, these laws that are written down to the nth degree. It continues, uh, Do not fear the scorning of men, and let not their disparagement vanquish you. So, um, if you have the law of Christ in your heart, then don't be, uh, this, if people scorn you, hold out for the things 
of God, holds the things of Christ, and um, if they make fun of you, and so don't let it vanquish you. Don't let it overcome you. Hold your ground for Jesus Christ, and I'm sure that um, as we get closer towards the end, which I believe we are, uh, then this will be happening more and more. In verse 8, he continues, For as a garment that shall be eaten, I had changed that to by time, and as wool shall be eaten by a moth, that the righteousness of mine will be into the eon, and the deliverance of mine for generations of generations. So for these people of that religion that believe the eon uh, in Hades is not uh, forever, it's, it's only for a certain period, and they're going, the evil ones are going to be destroyed. Well, then does that mean that his righteousness only lasts for a certain period of time, and then it's going to come to an end? Of course not. And the deliverance of mine for generations of generations. The genias, here you can see the genna and the genna. And here again in the imperative, awaken, awaken, O Jerusalem, and put on the strength of your arm. Now we have here... Jerusalem. It's important here that it's all of a sudden it doesn't say Zion, but it gives the location, exact location of this city Jerusalem. And put on strength of your arm. Why? Awaken as in the beginning of days, as a generation of an eon. Are you not the one being quarried in width, being torn up by the dragon? So here uh, we, I see the, again Babylon of the book of Revelation being Jerusalem. And here it talks about the dragon is being torn up, uh, torn up by uh, the dragon. And we have a note here, and it says, uh, And the dragon was provoked to anger against the woman and went forth to make war with the rest of her seed, giving her to the commandments of God and having the testimony of Jesus so there, the dragon, it's in, he's in Jerusalem, and this is where his nest is, some type of a satanic being, a, a serpent. Uh, don't exactly know, but it's a horrible uh, thing that he is. Are you not the one making desolate the sea, the abundance of uh, the deep water, the one having put the depths of the sea uh, a way of a ford to the ones being rescued? Well, we see that in Revelation also. It says, uh, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth swallowed down the river which the dragon shot out from out of his mouth. So I believe here uh, Isaiah is referring to this thing that's going to happen in the future in Jerusalem, because it talks, this is all about Jerusalem. And the ones being ransomed, that is in Isaiah, and the ones being ransomed, for by the Lord they shall be returned and shall come unto Zion with gladness and an everlasting leap for joy. Well, the Jews are definitely coming back to Israel. They have since 1948, and I'm sure there's a gladness and a leap, but it's an everlasting leap for joy. Um, I don't know if I see that because they are uh, being confronted by the nations of the world, and um, it's not an easy time for the Jews, even if they are in their own uh, land. And it says, For uh, upon their head praise and gladness shall overtake them. Grief and distress and moaning ran away. Well, I don't see that as happening yet. I think Isaiah's talking about at the end times after the beast is destroyed. That's how I see it. And then verse 12, it continues again with the Greek, egoimi, egoimi aftos. I am, I am he. And so the Pharisees knew the Greek. Jesus, if that's what he spoke, or if it was translated into Greek, whatever the uh, Pharisees knew that Jesus was claiming that he is the I am uh, God. The one comforting you. Know who is being that you should be fearful from mortal man. Well, who is being, I, I believe that's God. Uh, that you should be fearful from mortal man and from a son of man, the ones who as grass were dried up. So something has uh, happened to the uh, people that is not good. They were dried up. And how, why? It says, and you forgot God, 
So now he's going into the negative. The one making you and the one making the heaven and laying the foundation of the earth. So uh, they forgot. And this, I believe, he's talking about, and Isaiah's going back to the Jews at this period of time during Hezekiah. And fear continually all the days in front of the rage of the one afflicting you. Now, uh, in which manner he planned to carry you away. Now, who is he talking about here? Is he talking about uh, the uh, somebody carrying them away? Or I believe it's he's talking about a God. God is the one uh, uh, that I believe that um, that is afflicting them, uh, having them carried away by Nebuchadnezzar and then the Romans. And now, where is the rage of the one afflicting you? Uh, the word is that so somehow it's changed, and I believe now he's showing towards the end. For in your being delivered, he shall not stop nor pass time. He's going to be, he's going to take care of you, and he shall not kill for hurt, and in no way shall he lack his bread. For I am your God, the one disturbing the sea and resounding its waves. The Lord of hosts is my name. So this is uh, God. I will put my words into your mouth, and under the shadow of my hand I will shelter you, in which I established the heaven and founded the earth. I believe he's talking to both the Christian and the Jew in the future, the Jew in the future. And he shall say to Zion, you are my people. So apparently they weren't his people at one time, because he wouldn't, why would he say you are my people uh, to Zion if uh, they were not his people and they revolted against God? killed uh, his son, and then uh, made way for the beast to come, then that would be not good, and that would be where he was. They weren't his people in that circumstances, if that's what the case is. Again, awaken, awaken. Uh, Rise up, O Jerusalem, the one drinking from out of the hand of the Lord, the cup of his rage. So here you go, exactly in the book of Revelation. Um, The um, Babylon the beast, the cup of the rage of God against Jerusalem. For the cup of the blow, the drinking cup of rage, you drank and emptied out. So this is what is going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. And there was not the one comforting you from all of your children whom you gave birth. And it's interesting. And who's the one that's trying to comfort the Jews are the Christians who are trying to tell them about Christ, who is their God. Uh, whether they like it or not. He is God. He came to them as the Messiah, the Christos, and um, their children are not comforting the Jews because they don't have the comfort of Christ. But yet, uh, this is what Christ has. And there was not the one taking hold of your hand, nor from all of your sons whom you raised. A terrible thing to um, prophesy against these people. I'm sure that the Jews that read Isaiah would like to have gotten rid of him, not accepted this. Therefore, these things are adverse to you. Well, who will grieve with you? A calamitous downfall and defeat, hunger, and sword. Who will comfort you? So all these things, uh, defeat, hunger, sword, all this is in the book of Revelation. But your sons are the ones being perplexed, sleeping on the top of all the streets, as a half-boiled beet, and that's something that in Jerusalem, as it's being uh, conquered by the nations, that uh, more or less is talking about is the way I see this. The ones full of the rage of the Lord, fainting from the Lord God, from the things that God did against Jerusalem. On account of this, here, O one being humbled, so now it changes here to ones being humbled, and I don't see that in Israel at all. Um, but uh, humbled, and this is what it's going to be in the future. They'll be humbled. And, oh, one being intoxicated, not from wine. They'll be dizzy. Things that are going, especially when they see Jesus return, and he shows them the uh, hand prints, the uh, nail prints in his hands and feet. Thus says the Lord God, the one judging his people. Now, his people, it could be the Jews, it could be the Christians also. Behold, I took from out of your hand the cup of the blow. So now he is removing the bad things at the end. 
the drinking cup of my rage, and you shall not proceed to drink it any longer. And I give it into the hand of the ones wronging you, and of the ones humbling you, which said to your soul, Bow, that we should go by, and you put uh, the things in your midst uh, equal to the ground outside to the ones coming near. So they will be humbled, uh, and then the ones that are humbling Israel, coming against it themselves, will be humbled. The whole world will be humbled, and then the bad, all these things in Revelation, the earth upheaval, and um, cr- people that are not um, believers, everybody will uh, be uh, humbled in this upheaval of the earth, of, of which it mentions all in the book of Revelation. But yet, um, the putting your hope on Jesus Christ to me is the answer that he mentioned at the very beginning of this chapter. Chapter 52, now we go in to Jerusalem, the restoration of Jerusalem. Hope you'll join us in chapter 52 and find out what that's all about. God bless.